In this presentation, we will set up the function of bank feeds within QuickBooks Pro 2019. But for more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Before we do so, it's important to know what bank feeds do and what they do not do. It's easy for us to think that if we can get the bank feeds or the banking information automatically into the system, that that will be our whole process and then the whole bookkeeping process will be done for us. And that's not necessarily the case. The bank feeds can actually help and hinder depending on the type of setup that we're going through within the QuickBooks setup. So we'll discuss a little bit about that as we go. So what does the bank feed do? It will download banking activity automatically. We typically within the desktop version will have to request the bank feed, meaning We'll have to link to the bank periodically and download transactions and then we'll get the transactions that would be on the bank statement directly downloaded. However, it's not going to automatically go into the QuickBooks system or not at first. We're going to have to approve or match up that data into the QuickBooks system. We also have to be very careful when we download this information from QuickBooks or from the bank to QuickBooks that we're not creating duplicates and that we're allocating that information to the correct spot. So when we do this, it can actually actually be very overwhelming when we download a bunch of bank feeds into the QuickBooks system because then we have to really allocate all this data and know how to do that. And the only way to know how to allocate the data is to have some idea of how QuickBooks runs. What are the forms that create QuickBooks? How does QuickBooks uh, put this information together? So we still need to do that. What does it not do? It doesn't eliminate categorizing. So just because we have the bank feeds in the system, we typically then have to go through them and categorize them. And we also have to make sure that we're not having duplicate information in the bank feeds. Uh, it doesn't eliminate the need for bank reconciliation as well. We will typically need to reconcile at the end of the month. Now the bank feeds are going to be easier or less easy to use depending on the type of system we are using. In other words, if we download all of our information just from the banking system and we're not entering any physical data, we're not using QuickBooks to enter invoices or enter bills or, or anything or entering deposits or writing checks within the system, but instead just getting all of our information from a bank feed and basically being on a cash basis, mimicking what the bank is giving us so that we can take that data and put it into a financial statement format then the bank feeds are, are going to be easier to use in some cases because we, we're not going to have the problem as easily or as much of having double information, duplicate information, matching up things like an invoice to uh, the deposit, matching up things like a bill to the check. However, if we're doing some of the inf input ourselves, if we want to use QuickBooks in order to enter invoices, in order to track accounts receivable, in order to enter bills and track bills, then when we have the bank feeds, we got to be more careful, of course, because we've entered some of the data on our side and we got to make sure that the data that we are getting from the bank is matching up to the data that we are manually entering into the system. So in other words, it is possible if we're running a small company or a small bookkeeping process to just do kind of like write up on a cash basis and just download all the information from the bank and basically be on a cash basis, be reliant on the bank. And if we're doing that, we're less likely to have duplicate information. But if we are entering data outside of the bank system, which we really should be in a full accounting process, if we're using QuickBooks to do the full accounting, then the, we got to be really careful when we do the bank feeds that we're, we're tying everything out and we're not duplicating information. And really the bank feeds should be something, the bank account should be something in a full service bookkeeping process that will double check our numbers. So in other words, the banking system is doing our books for us just on the cash side and the reconciliation of the bank to our books or our books to the bank gives us assurance from an outside third party. If we're just getting all of our data from the outside third party and we're not entering any data into the system, then we're kind of really just relying on that third party, which can work for, for smaller businesses. But ideally, we would like to be entering the data into our system and using the bank as a double check. In either case, it's still going to be useful to reconcile at the end of the month because those will tell us our timing differences uh, at the end of the month, if there are any, and there will be if we're entering our own deposits 
as opposed to and writing our own checks as opposed to just getting the information from the bank. If we do just get all of our information from the bank, then there's not going to be too much timing difference because all of our information will be uh, directly equal or to the banking system. If we want to get some idea of maneuvering around the bank feeds system, you can open the sample file within the QuickBooks program. So if you have QuickBooks and you sign out of any company you are working on, you'll typically get a screen like this, which will be the open screen. And you can open a sample file. And when you go into those sample files, they'll typically have some data in the bank feeds section and you get some idea of moving around those bank feeds. Here we are on the home page. We currently have the open windows open. The way to open the open windows is to go to the view drop down and select the open windows list. In order to set up the bank feeds, it's a pretty straightforward process. It's a little bit more complicated in the desktop version here as opposed to the online version, but still pretty straightforward. We're going to go to the banking drop down and we're going to go to the bank feeds. And then we'll set up a bank feed for an account. So we're going to set up a bank feed for an account. And we're going to say all open QuickBooks windows will close. That's okay. So we're going to say yes. And then we'll just go through the process of setting up the bank feeds. And what you'll need for the bank feeds is typically you're going to need the institution that you're going to be working with for the bank feeds. So we'll, we'll type in the institution if it was Bank of America all states then uh, we'll have that information and then typically as we go through this we're going to have to enter our information in terms of if we have online banking our password for the online banking and our username we may need the account number of course depending on the institution the bank may have some kind of double check verification as well in other words they may ask you to go to a separate website and um, put your information log into that website and then have a separate verification which might be by phone or email and, and then allowing the link to the bank feed so that would go through the setup process once you're set up be aware that the different institutions may differ slightly in the setup process and they may differ slightly in terms of what if they have fees for the bank feeds or what type of bank feeds they're going to allow or how many months worth of data will be uh, given at a time within the bank feed. So those are types of things you're going to have to check from an institution by institution. But most large banks should have a bank feeds option. We're now going to jump over to QuickBooks sample file, which you should be able to find in the open a sample file within the QuickBooks program. If you're logged out of any company, we're looking at the sample product based business in QuickBooks. Here we are on the home page. We got the open windows open. In order to open the open windows, we go to the view and the open windows list. Once the bank feeds are set up, then you can go into the banking section drop down. And within the banking section, we're going to go into bank feeds. And it's nice just to go to the bank feeds center. So we'll go to the bank feeds center. And it'll give us the list of bank feeds that we have set up. So, so we have the account ending, the account ending, and then the credit card account ending. The second one is going to be our bank feeds for our checking account. So I'm going to go to this second item here. It's going to give us a little bit of a snapshot. Here's the financial institutions balance and here's the balance in QuickBooks. They don't match and that's typically going to be the case if we're entering data into the QuickBooks system and then trying to match it up with the data from the bank because we're always going to have timing differences. If we're actually writing checks out of the system or entering our own deposits, then we're going to have deposits entered into the system which uh, the bank doesn't know about yet and that's typical that's the way it should happen however if we were getting all of our information from the bank and not entering our own data into the system but just running through in essence bank fees being on a cash basis that's the only time when these th two things would really match if we're using quickbooks for more of a full service type of bookkeeping system then it's typical that they won't match and that the bank feeds will help us kind of catch those items that we don't enter into the system for whatever reason. Possibly they're electronic transfers as opposed to checks and deposits, deposits or those items that we don't uh, get on there, including uh, bank service charges and those types of items. So for example, if we go to the checking account by going to the banking dropdown and use register, and we wanna take a look at the major checking account. So it's on the checking account and okay. We got 45,671. That's what's on the checking account. If we go back to the bank feeds, the bank is saying 5,035. So that's our difference. And that's why we still need to reconcile 
even if we uh, download the, the bank feeds. To download the bank feeds, if this said download over here, that would mean that there would be downloadable bank feeds. So if I, if I go, for example, back up to this institution up top, it says download transactions. You're going to have to do that when you want to initiate a new download. So when you select that, it should download the transactions uh, since the last time that you downloaded the transactions. If it's the first time working this, then there's going to be some type of time limit depending on the institution. So it could be 30, 60, 90 days of data that you can get. If you have to go past or further than what's downloadable, then it may be possible to go to the institution and get a file that you can download from the bank and then upload the file. So if you have to get more like a whole year's worth of data, then you may have to do something other than just the downloading the data. You may have to, but you may still be able to automatically do it by going to the institution and downloading a file that you can then upload into the system for more than that time period. Once you have the, the, the system set up and you start to download the information, then you can then you can keep on downloading this and hopefully it will not be a system where it will duplicate the information. You just want to be careful of the timing. When's the last data that you downloaded? What are we downloading now? Just make sure that there's no overlap in the information or that you're aware of it so we can deal with it. And we'll talk a little bit how on how to do that. Back to the second account. Uh, once we have that set up, then we'll have this item, which is going to be the transaction lists. And this will give us the activity. So we'll actually, this is where we'll spend most of our time because we'll go into here and we'll see what has been downloaded. And they'll give us a bit of a, a detail in terms of what we have here. These little windows up, up top say this is a need your review. These are going to be, the, of course, the orange items that we need to check off. These ones were auto matched, meaning QuickBooks said, hey, I think I know what this is. I think I can match it up to something that's already in the system. We'll talk a little bit more about what that means, but we could then just approve these items here. Uh, then we have the status here. So these are need your review, change, changed by rules, or auto-matched. So uh, it's going to tell us that either we need to do something with it. It doesn't know what the system doesn't know what to do with it. Or it was changed because of a rule that we put in place. We made a rule and it and it uh, changed this transaction in accordance with a rule. Or it was automatically matched to a current transaction that is already in the system. And so that's going to help us to uh, eliminate duplicate transactions and be able to work through the flow as we normally would within the system and so then we've got the type so all types of transactions transfers checks deposits we can take a look by type we've got the dates to from dates and then uh, we've got the show bank memo it's often useful to see the bank memo if it's going to be different so we can have the bank memo open if you're in an institution where the bank memo is not providing any more detail or possibly not any detail depending on the institution we're working with then this could be useful or not useful so just check it out <laughs> with any institution and then of course we have these items where we can check off and then have batch actions based on those actions so we can approve entire transactions so if we checked off these two we can approve both of them or we can ignore them what this window means is that there's going to be these items that are here waiting for us to do something with and that means they're not in the QuickBooks system. They're not in our bookkeeping system. We need to check them off and make sure that they're, that they're appropriate so that they can go into the bookkeeping system. And what we're looking for is, one, do they have enough information to go into the system? Uh, do we have the vendors? Do we have the customers? Do we have the proper accounts for it to go into the system? And two, are there duplicate transactions that we need to match up and make sure that they're not uh, duplicating any transactions? And three, are they linked in some way to some other transaction that we need to make sure that we're properly setting up throughout the system? Like is the invoice set up and linked to the deposit that we're having? Or are we going to have a lingering invoice out there that looks like it has no payment? Is the bills uh, going to be followed by the, the check payment that we had? If not, if we don't link up, link up the check payment, then we're going to have a lingering bill out there. So we'll go through some items in terms of, okay, how can we then verify these these accounts and how can we then get these from this window into our list into QuickBooks. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.